Here is Synthax, a time traveler from the year 2500. And I'm about to take you on a journey through time to witness the remarkable life of a legend, Bruce Lee. We begin our journey on November 27, 1940, in Chinatown, San Francisco. The roaring sounds of a World War II-era city engulf us, and we are immediately met by the sight of a small child, born in the year and the hour of the dragon according to Chinese Zodiac, a fitting beginning for a man who would go on to be known as the dragon himself. As we travel through time, we see Bruce's early childhood unfold in Hong Kong. Born Lee Jun Fan, he was the fourth of five children in his family. His father, Lee Hoi Chuan, was a famous Cantonese opera star, and his mother, Grace Ho, was a socialite of mixed Chinese and European ancestry. Bruce was introduced to the film industry at an early age due to his father's connections, which provided a glimpse of the charismatic performer he would later become. Lee's early childhood was marked by the turbulent times of the Japanese occupation during World War II. He was often found on rooftops, flying kites, a symbol of freedom, in the chaotic urban landscape. The hardships and struggles during these years would become the foundation of his resilient character. With post-war Hong Kong bustling with renewed energy, Bruce's education started at LaSalle College, a prestigious Catholic boys' school. Despite his promising academic abilities, he was more drawn towards physical activities. As a natural athlete, he excelled in cha-cha dancing and even won a citywide dance competition in 1958. By the age of 13, Bruce's energy found a new channel, martial arts. A street fight with a local gang led him to seek instruction in Wing Chun under Master Yip Man. The discipline, respect, and artistry of martial arts had a profound impact on Bruce, shaping his philosophy towards life. During his time under Yip Man's tutelage, Bruce became aware of the power of martial arts, not only as a form of self-defense but as a path of personal development. The concept of using no way as a way, the core philosophy of Jeet Kune Do, began to form in his mind at this time. Despite his budding interest in martial arts, Bruce was equally involved in the world of cinema. He acted in several Hong Kong films as a child actor, with his first leading role being in The Kid, in which he played a streetwise orphan. As he entered his late teens, Bruce began to see the potential dangers of his fiery spirit. His street fights became frequent, raising concerns among his parents. This, combined with the unstable political climate of 1950s Hong Kong, led his parents to make a decision that would shape Bruce's future. In 1959, at the age of 18, Bruce found himself on a steamer ship, making a trans-Pacific journey to the United States, the country of his birth. He was to live with his older sister, Agnes Lee, in San Francisco. This decision would set the stage for Bruce's transformation from a street fighter to an international icon. Bruce's early days in America were filled with struggle. Working odd jobs, from live-in waiter to dance instructor, he strived to make ends meet while pursuing his high school education. His charisma and relentless energy, however, kept him optimistic and eager to seize any opportunity life would offer. Lee's passion for martial arts didn't diminish in America. In Seattle, he started teaching martial arts, giving birth to his first iteration of a martial arts style that would later evolve into Jeet Kune Do. His charismatic teaching style and unique martial arts philosophy attracted a diverse group of students. Among these students was Linda Emery, a bright young woman who was drawn to Lee's charismatic personality and infectious energy. The two quickly became close, and their relationship evolved into a romantic one. Linda would eventually become Bruce's wife, steadfast partner, and the mother of his two children. Bruce's relationship with Linda wasn't just one of romance. She provided emotional support, standing by him during the toughest times of racial prejudice and financial instability. She was a pillar of strength for Bruce, helping him navigate the uncharted waters of a new country and culture. In 1964, the couple moved to Oakland, California. There, Bruce and his friend, James Yim Lee, opened the Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute. The move marked an important milestone in Bruce's career as he began to make strides in his innovative approach to martial arts. It was during this period that Bruce got involved in a legendary private fight with Wong Jack Man, a fellow martial artist in the San Francisco area. The fight, a pivotal event in Bruce's life, challenged him to reevaluate his technique and philosophy, inspiring him to develop Jeet Kune Do. The mid-1960s saw Bruce juggling roles as a martial arts instructor, husband, father, and aspiring actor. 
His big break in Hollywood came when he was cast as Kato in the Green Hornet TV series. This marked the beginning of his journey towards becoming an international film star. Despite the cancellation of the Green Hornet series, Bruce's charisma as Kato made a lasting impression on audiences. He started getting small roles in TV shows and films, but he found Hollywood's stereotypical portrayal of Asian characters frustrating and limiting. In the late 1960s, facing limited opportunities in Hollywood, Bruce turned his attention back to Hong Kong. After discovering his unexpected popularity there due to the Green Hornet, he decided to leverage his fame and produce martial arts films that reflected his philosophy. Bruce's return to Hong Kong was met with a wave of excitement. He signed a two-film contract with the Golden Harvest Studio, marking the beginning of a new chapter in his acting career. His first film, The Big Boss, released in 1971, was a major box office success. His following film, Fist of Fury, cemented Bruce's status as a superstar in Hong Kong cinema. His on-screen charisma, coupled with his innovative fight choreography, resonated with audiences, setting new records in the Asian film market. In 1972, Bruce wrote, directed, and starred in his third film, Way of the Dragon. The film was a huge success and is remembered for the iconic showdown between Bruce and the American martial artist Chuck Norris in the Roman Colosseum. Despite his stardom in Asia, Bruce never gave up on his dream of breaking stereotypes in Hollywood. His determination paid off when Warner Brothers approached him for a joint venture with Golden Harvest to produce Enter the Dragon. It was the first major Hollywood Asian collaboration, and Bruce had creative control over the martial arts sequences. The release of Enter the Dragon in 1973 marked the apex of Bruce's career. His charisma, combined with his innovative fight choreography and philosophical teachings, made the film a global phenomenon. Bruce Lee, the charismatic Asian actor, had shattered Hollywood stereotypes and introduced the world to a new kind of action star. Beyond his film career, Bruce also made significant contributions to the world of martial arts. He developed Jeet Kune Do, a hybrid martial arts philosophy that emphasized simplicity, directness, and personal freedom. His teachings and philosophies continue to influence martial artists and philosophers around the world. Through Jeet Kune Do, Bruce encouraged his students to express themselves honestly through their movement. This philosophy extended to his personal life. Bruce was known for his unwavering honesty and authenticity, traits that endeared him to his fans and students. But life wasn't always bright lights and film sets for Bruce. Behind the scenes, he faced numerous challenges. One of the most significant was a back injury in 1970 that doctors believed would end his martial arts career. Undeterred, Bruce used the period of recovery to write and reflect, deepening his martial arts philosophy and defying medical predictions. As we step into 1973, we see Bruce grappling with sudden headaches and seizures, an unfortunate foreshadowing of the tragedy to come. Amid these health challenges, Bruce remained focused on his work, never losing his infectious energy and determination. Bruce's career was at its peak, and plans for future projects were on the horizon. But fate had a cruel twist in store. On July 20, 1973, the world was shocked by the news of Bruce Lee's untimely death at the age of 32. The cause was a cerebral edema, a swelling of the brain. The world had lost a superstar, a revolutionary martial artist, and a beloved father and husband. The news of Bruce's death sent shockwaves across the globe. Thousands of mourners lined the streets of Hong Kong to pay their last respects to their hometown hero. His body was later flown to Seattle, where he was laid to rest in Lakeview Cemetery, next to his son, Brandon Lee. Bruce Lee's legacy continues to inspire millions around the world. His teachings in martial arts, his philosophies on life, and his groundbreaking roles in films have made him a cultural icon. He bridged the gap between Eastern and Western cultures and paved the way for future Asian actors in Hollywood. Bruce's life serves as a testament to resilience, courage, and unwavering belief in one's potential. His journey from a street fighter in Hong Kong to a Hollywood icon is a story of passion, determination, and the relentless pursuit of excellence. Bruce's influence extended beyond films and martial arts. His philosophical teachings, drawn from various Eastern and Western philosophies, continue to inspire and guide people in their personal and professional lives. He was a philosopher, a thinker, and a visionary, whose impact extends far beyond his brief life. Bruce's legacy also lives on in his family. His wife, 
Linda Lee Cadwell, continues to protect and promote his philosophical and martial teachings. His daughter, Shannon Lee, is an actress, producer, and businesswoman who has devoted her life to preserving her father's legacy. His son, Brandon Lee, followed in his father's footsteps into acting and martial arts. Unfortunately, his life, like his father's, was cut tragically short in an accident on the set of his breakthrough film, The Crow, in 1993. Despite the tragedy, Brandon's performances continue to be cherished by fans, keeping both his and his father's spirits alive. Until we meet again, farewell.